around Dodge City and in the territory on West, there's just one way to handle the killers and the spoilers, and that's with a U.S. Marshal and the smell of gun smoke. Gunsmoke, starring William Conrad, the story of the violence that moved west with young America, and the story of a man who moved with it. I'm that man, Matt Dillon, United States Marshal, the first man they look for and the last they want to meet. It's a chancy job, and it makes a man watchful and a little lonely. Millions of Americans are now crowding our highways, pushing and impatient to get the most out of this weekend. The hundreds of highway deaths and thousands of highway injuries can be avoided, provided that every single motorist does his bit. That bit means driving safely and sanely all the time. There's positively no excuse for excess speed. By observing all speed limits, you'll get to your destination almost as soon, whereas if you speed, you may never get there. Just as important is the necessity of paying strict attention to traffic signs and those white lines on the highway. They were put there for your protection. Never pass unless you're absolutely certain it's safe, that the road is clear ahead. Never pull out of line, slow up, stop, or turn without first looking in your mirror, then signaling clearly well ahead. And don't be afraid to give the other fellow the right of way. If you let him go, you won't crash into him. At all times, drive with caution and courtesy. You'll live longer. It had been a long, hard ride to Fort Larned. And as it turned out, a useless one. The prisoner Colonel Matthews had been holding for me died before I could get there. So I spent the night at the fort and then started back for Dodge the next morning. The trip back was more pleasant. A breeze from the Rockies swept across the high plains, and it was cool for the first time in weeks. And now, camp for the night, just a day's ride out of Dodge, I was looking forward to a bath and a shave at Mr. Teeter's. I must have been asleep for some time when a sound awakened me. Somebody was standing just outside the circle of light cast from the dying fire. All right, hold it. Now, you raise your hands and you walk in here slow. Keep coming. Right up to the fire. Now just stand it. Is there anybody with you? No. I'm alone. Please, mister. I didn't mean any harm. What are you doing here? I was hungry. Thought maybe I could get some food. Well, I might have shot you. I'm awful hungry, mister. I've been sitting out there watching your fire. I thought you were asleep. Well, there's some side meat in that fry pan. It's cold, but you can have it if you want. Thank you, mister. You really were hungry, weren't you? Yes, sir. What did you eat last? This morning. Just before I ran away. Ran away? That's right. I ran away from home. I see. What's your name? Trudy. Trudy Trent. Well, where is it, Trudy? Your home. About 40 miles from here. What's your name? Dillon, Matt Dillon. I'm the U.S. Marshal in Dodge. Dodge? That's right where I'm headed. Now, look, Trudy, Dodge is a long way from here, a whole day's ride. Don't you think you'd better ride back home tomorrow and think about this a little? Your parents are going to be a little worried. That's just me and Pa, Marshal. And I sure ain't going back to him. He's probably out looking for you right now. Pa? He gets drunk almost every night. Ain't likely he's out riding around on the prairie. I see. He's about the most terrible man ever lived, Marshal. I could tell you things he done to me you wouldn't believe. You want to hear? Look, Trudy, a lot of kids don't always get along with their pa. I'm not a kid, Marshal. I'm old enough. I've been old enough a long time. Look, you're going back home in the morning, and I'm going to ride with you to make sure you get there. Don't you like me, Marshal? Uh, sure, I like you, Trudy, but you're still going home. 
Don't make me go back there. Please. I'll do anything you want. But please don't make me go back. I got a blanket for you. You can sleep with the fire. Marshal, please. Look, Trudy, whether you think so or not, you're still just a kid, and I'm taking you home in the morning. <laughs> In the morning, I awakened to a clear, warm day, but the blanket I'd given to Trudy lay crumpled and empty on the ground. For a minute, I thought she'd run off. Then I heard splashing from the other side of the willows. She was taking a swim. A few minutes later, she was out, dressed, and we were breaking camp. It was wonderful, Marshal. You should have tried it. You ready to ride? You're mad at me. Trudy, you had something to eat. You got some sleep. You had your swim, and now you're going home. I changed my mind. What? I changed my mind. I'm not going home. I'm going to Dodge with you. Now, look, Trudy. Can you think of one good reason for not taking me to Dodge? Now, Dodge is no place for a girl like you. You still think I'm too young? Will you just wait till you see me all dressed up? You won't think I'm too young then. You belong at home, Trudy. Now, let's get mounted. Marshal. What? If you want, you can marry me. You want to marry me? It's not going to work, Trudy. I told you, you belong at home with your pa, and that's where you're going. And you keep talking about how Dodge is no place for a decent girl. We're wasting time. Let's go. Well... There it is, Marshal. You can see we don't make out too good. This is hard land, Trudy. Any land's hard for Pa. He had a pretty good farm once, but he left it. Why? He had to. The neighbors run him off for stealing stock. He told me about it one night when he was drunk. He laughed fit to kill. Marshal, will you stay the night and think about taking me away with you? We'll see. Come on. Let's go in and get this over with. Pa? Hey, Pa! Hey, where... Where did you run off to, girl? I guess she was worried some, huh? You sassed me and I'll fetch you a clout. This is Marshal Dillon, Pa, from Dodge. What you bringing the law out here for? He brought me home, Pa. You, uh? I ran away yesterday morning. Marshal brought me home. I ought to tan you good, girl. Running off that way. You worried about who'd do the chores, weren't you, Pa? Now, don't you talk like that, girl. Because I missed you. I missed you something fierce. I'll bet you did. I worried so much that I didn't hardly eat nothing. But you sure been drinking enough, though. Hey, Marshal, don't... Don't you pay her no mind. She's my little girl. And I care a whole heap for her. Listen to him. Don't I make you sick, Marshal? I, uh... I'll spend the night like you asked, Trudy. Now I better take care of the horses. What's this, what's this? This about spending the night? I asked him to, Pa. Well, for... We don't need him around here. And I'll tell you something else. Tomorrow I'm riding to Dodge with him to stay. You what? I'm leaving you, Pa, for good and all. No, not hardly you ain't. Don't you hit me, Pa. Now, look, Mr. Trash. I, I tell you true. You take her away, I'll come to Dodge. I'll tell people what you done, young girl like that. Why don't we wait and talk about all this later, huh? When you're sober... Well, I don't know as I aim to get sober. But I know one thing for sure. You ain't taking Trudy away. Never mind him, Marshal. You go take care of the horses. I'll find something for supper. Drunk or sober, I'll say just one thing. Just don't mess with me and my Trudy. Just don't mess. <laughs> Don't be a 
a forest fire bug. Remember, a careless match, cigarette butt, or campfire left to spread can do more than destroy valuable timber acreage. It can lay waste to private property, wipe out homes, animal life, and human life as well. One cigarette butt thrown from the window of your car, if the wind is right, can lay waste to what nature took hundreds of years to build. CBS Radio and its affiliated stations offer this reminder. When fire saps America's natural wealth by one forest's potential value, our nation is worth that much less in the marketplace of the world. Don't burn out our great heritage. Take every precaution in or near the woods. The Trent farm wasn't much of a place inside or out. The front room where we ate was just a broken stove, a couple of bunks, and burlap hung over the two unglass windows. Supper was some boiled greens and cheap herders' bread, which Asa used to sop up his plate. Mm. Mm. You eat mm. like a hog, Pa. <laughs> She's got a real sharp tongue, ain't she, Marshal? Yeah, she can talk all right. Oh, yeah, she can do everything. Sure. Mm. Cook, clean, fetch, yeah. carry, feed the stock, yeah. anything. Yeah, I, I taught her them things, yeah, and a lot more. I'll too. bet, and it's cheaper than hiring somebody, huh? Even cheaper than getting married, ain't it, Pa? Because if you're married, you'd have another mouth to feed, nah, huh? Ah, don't talk like that. No, you're my little girl. Hey, we have good times together, don't we? It's a palace of joy, Pa. Now, Trudy, girl. You know how we celebrated Christmas, Marshal? Pa got drunk and set me on fire. I had to run out and roll in the snow or I'd have burned up. And he wouldn't let me back in. I'm here froze to death. Well, I'm going to go out to the barn Get me another jug of whiskey. The one under the bed's empty. Myself, uh, well, Marshal, what do you think now? Still think I shouldn't go into Dodge with you? Is he always like that? Not always. Right now he's kind of on good behavior on account of you being here. I see. Dodge couldn't be worse than this, could it? Uh, no, I guess not. Then will you take me, please? Yeah, I'll take it. Honest? Yeah, but your pa's going to make a fuss. There's going to be trouble. You afraid of him? No, it's not that. I just don't want anybody hurt. Well, ain't I worth fighting for? Just a little? Now, Trudy, I want you to get something straight. I'd do the same for anybody. Now, look, the first thing in the morning... Pa, how long you been standing there? Marshal, you can sleep in the barn. Uh, Fine. Yeah, you'll find a good spot right at the edge of the loft. You'll like it fine there. You'll sleep good, too. The barn was warm and filled with a smell of sweet hay. As I drifted off to sleep, the figures of Trudy and her father turned and twisted in my mind. Then suddenly I was awake again, wide awake, because somebody was moving toward me across the barn floor. For a moment I thought it was Trudy, and then I saw the rifle in his hand. All the Trent, die, blast you! Asa. Asa. In the barn, Trudy. What happened? Did he shoot you? No. I heard him get up and go out, and I followed as soon as I could. Is he dead? Yeah. He shouldn't have tried it. Trudy, I'm sorry. Don't be. He had it coming. Hey, you go on back to the house. It'll be dawn in an hour. I got some work to do here. I ain't going to stay on this rotten farm now, Marshal. That's for sure. You get your things together, Trudy. We'll leave for Dodge as soon as it's light. Just as the sun was breaking over the horizon, Trudy and I rode away from her father's ranch for the last time. She never once looked back. But I did. The roof sagging at one end, the boarded windows, the unwatered patch of corn, 
makeshift barn. A small cross now stood over a stone-covered grave. It wasn't a hard place to leave. In Dodge, I told Kitty about the whole affair, and she promised to give the girl a hand. So she put Trudy to work on the long branch, said she could keep an eye on her that way. Hello, Matt. Hey, you're doing quite a business. Yeah. Sit down. Oh, thanks. Well, how's Trudy working out? Oh, fine, I guess. Well, what do you mean, you guess? It's a little soon to know yet. That girl's got a mind of her own. Any trouble? With her? No. No trouble. She's over there at the bar now, talking with Gar Klein. Gar Klein? Yeah, that nice-looking kid then. Oh, no, who's he? I don't know too much about him. Never used to come in here too much. I think maybe he's in love with Trudy. In love? What's the matter? You jealous? <laughs> I don't start that, Kitty. Well, I know one thing. The girl's got quite a case on you. She's just a kid. It won't last. I don't know about that. A U.S. Marshal's a good catch for a girl. Uh, she meets a lot of men here. Maybe she'll forget about it. From what I can see, God doesn't let her meet many men. He's so jealous he won't let her out of his sight. Yeah, I guess they're both pretty young. <laughs> Don't underestimate young love, Matt. Besides, this has been going on for three days now. I saw you come in, Marshal. Uh, how are you, Trudy? God says he never met you. Hello. Marshal? You new in town, girl? Guy hasn't been here much longer than I have, Marshal. But he's staying on. Ain't you, Guy? Yes, I am. Well, that's good. I've been promised a job of work out at Emmett Bower's place. Then when I'm able, I'm getting Trudy out of here. Well, the Long Branch isn't that bad. I keep an eye on her when you're not around, Guy. I thank you for that, Miss Kitty. But just the same girl like Trudy... She shouldn't have come here in the first place. He's not used to being around a saloon. I guess you're right. Like I say, it wasn't fitting to bring her here at all. Now, don't talk like that. Marshal knew what he was doing. He wanted to bring me here. Didn't you, Marshal? Well, uh, I don't know as I had much choice. But you did bring me. And now you're responsible for me. No, he ain't. He's not any such thing. I'm the one who's responsible for you and me only. You keep away from her, Marshal. You keep away from now on. Come on, Trudy. Well, you see what I mean? All I came in here for was a quiet drink. You know, the next time you better have Sam bring a bucket of beer down to my office. Oh, it's not that bad, Matt. I'll tell you what. This time it's on the house, huh? I guess I'm getting old, Kitty, but... Somehow it rubs a wrong way to be warned off by a youngster who's not dry behind the ears yet. He's just showing off, man. Well, I hope you're right. Well, how about that drink, huh? Hi, this is Dennis James with a longtime favorite... Yes, the long-time favorites are usually the best, aren't they? And one favorite folks have relied on over the years is Kellogg's All Brand. Since 1919, America's favorite natural laxative cereal. Kellogg's All Brand is the safe, gentle way to overcome irregularity caused by lack of bulk in your diet. It tastes good, too, and it, it never gets mushy in milk. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. So relieve constipation the way millions do with Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Yes, you're so right to stay regular with Kellogg's All Brand. Try it, okay? Okay. Yeah, come in. Evening, Marshal. Uh, Trudy, what are you doing here this time of night? 
I came to see you. Well, aren't you supposed to be working? I asked Kitty for a few hours off. Said I was sick. I see. You haven't been to Long Branch all night. Well, I've been busy. You don't seem very glad to see me. Now, look, Trudy. Let's get this straight. Marshal, I came here to tell you something. What? I just thought you ought to know now. I'm going to get married. Well, that's fine. To you. To me. Now, wait a minute. I thought you were talking about Gar Klein. Gar? Why him? Because he's in love with you. He got himself a job at Emmett Bowers so he could save enough money to marry you, get you a place. Gar's just a fence-riding cowboy, and that's all he's ever going to be. I'm not going to marry a man like that. Like I said, I'm going to marry you. Trudy, you're a foolish, romantic little girl, and I'm sure not about to get married to you or anybody else, not now or any time. Now, have you got that straight? Little girl, am I? You asked for I'll it. teach you how to talk to a woman. Stop it. Stop it. You just calm down. You feeling better now? I'll tell you how I feel. I'm going to tell everybody in Dodge you killed my pa and, and then you ran off with me. How my pa tried to stop you and you shot him dead and forced me to come with you. Trudy, you listen to me. You don't really care about me at all. Now, you be honest with yourself. You just want to be a U.S. Marshal's wife. Isn't that right? Trudy. Trudy, wait a minute. You try and do good for somebody, and this is what happens. Mm -hmm. uh, Matt, you look kind of tired. What? I say you look tired. Oh. <laughs> well, just like I've always told you, Chester... You can't burn the candle at both ends and not have it show. <laughs> oh, she must be a handful, all right, huh, no, well, She's got Matt going all right. It's a sure sign something's in the wind when they won't even talk about it. Yeah. yeah. Well, it even happened to me one time, Doc. Yeah? Uh, back in Texas, it was. Oh. And this little old gal, bless her heart, just wouldn't give me a minute's peace. She must have been a ridge-running beauty. Yeah. Well, no, she wasn't too bad, Mr. Gunn. <laughs> Ah, uh, say, you better get married, Matt. It's a whole lot easier in a man than, than all this court. I just hate to do this to you, gentlemen, but I'm going to have to leave. Uh, uh, don't forget my check when you leave, huh? Steak, eggs, and coffee. Thank you. Uh, 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 Matt! Uh, Matt! Uh, Marshal! Huh? Oh, Gar. I've been looking for you. Oh, what's the trouble? I heard all about it. All about what? Trudy told me last night. She told me everything. You've been drinking? Last night I was, but not now. I see. Last night, Trudy told me how you shot her paw so she could run off with now, her. Now, wait a minute, Gar. Now you got her here in Dodge, and you don't want her no more. Gar, will you listen to me? Trudy's lying to you. You're a fool to believe all that talk. I love her, Marshal, and she loves me. And I ain't going to have you make sport of her. I'm not trying to hurt her. I haven't said anything against her. Can't you see? This is what she wants. She's trying to make you jealous, trying to get back at me for turning her down. I'm going to kill you, now, You better just go along, son. We can talk about this later. Not hardly, Marshal. Gar, don't be a fool. This is for Trudy and what you've done to her. <laughs> Gar. Why don't you finish me off? Why don't you... You're not hurt bad, son. You're going to be all right. What in the world happened, Mr. Young? Aren't you all right, Matt? Yeah. Doc, see to this boy here, huh? And then Chester can take him over to the jail till he cools off. Where are you going? Down to the Long Branch. I'm going to have a talk with Trudy Trent. I heard the shooting, Matt. What was it? Gar Klein, but I'll tell you later. Right now, where can I find Trudy? Well, it won't be too easy, I'm afraid. Well, easy or not, I'm going to find her, and I'm going to run her out of town. Trudy's caused all the trouble she's going to around here. She's already gone, Matt. What? What happened to Gar? Did you shoot him? Yeah, but he'll be all right. What's this about Trudy? Well, last night, Gar was in here with Trudy, and she got him pretty drunk. From what I could tell, they were talking about you. Later, Gar passed out, and I had Sam put him in the back room to sleep it off. And that's when Trudy met the gambler. Gambler? Yeah, from St. Louis. 
He came in last night late, real late, on his way to San Francisco. Judy was at loose ends, and she got to talking with him, and they left together just half an hour ago on the morning stage. I see. I guess maybe he was a better catch than Gar Klein. Well, he looked like he was pretty rich. Fancy clothes and all. So I suppose she figured he was. Better than you, too, since she finally figured out she'd never get you. It's too bad about Gar. But I guess he was trying to do the right thing, at least the way he saw it. Yeah. Trouble is, she never really cared for him at all. He was fighting for just a lot of shadows. Well, maybe that's better than not fighting for anything at all. Yeah, I guess you're right, Kitty. I guess you're right. Next time you refresh, enjoy a frosty, ice-cold Pepsi-Cola. Sociability, Charlie. All right, Kay, how's this? Pepsi is light. Refreshes without filling. You like to refresh? Have a Pepsi right now. I'll we'll offer it to everybody, Charlie. I will. Enjoy Pepsi at the fountain. It's delicious at home, too. Have one at lunch or with a snack. Charlie. At the beach or at dinner. Wherever you go, wherever you're thirsty, Pepsi is there. It's here, too, in our Be Sociable song. Be sociable. No more. Keep up to For the weekend, have plenty of Pepsi around. Pick up an extra carton today. CK, I'm sociable. With Pepsi, everyone is. <laughs> Smoke. Produced and directed in Hollywood by Norman MacDonald, stars William Conrad as Matt Dillon, U.S. Marshal. The story was freshly written for Gunsmoke by Norman MacDonald with editorial supervision by John Meston. Featured in the cast were Eve McVeigh and Sam Edwards. Harley Bear is Chester, Howard McNear is Doc, and Georgia Ellis is Kitty.